Hey gang, welcome to your 33rd Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to make some GET requests using Vue Resource. Okay then, so in the last tutorial we've already seen how to make POST requests using this Vue Resource module. So we're going to do something similar in this tutorial, but this time we're going to use GET requests. Now to do that we're going to create a new component because this component right here is a form to add a new blog. And when we're making GET requests, we're typically retrieving data and we want to show that data. So we're going to make a new component to show blogs, to list our blogs, okay? So we'll get rid of this. Well, we won't get rid of it. We'll cross it off. And then we'll create a new component, new file, and we'll call this showblogs.view, okay? Now, the first thing I want to do is come to my root component, app.view, and I want to import it right here because we're going to use it in this app.view file. So I'm going to paste that dude and paste it down below and we'll change this to show blogs and this to show blogs as well. And then finally, we need to register this in our components. So we'll say show hyphen blogs is show blogs this thing right here, okay? So now let's nest it. So we'll just delete this for now and replace it with show blogs, like so. Okay, so now this is gonna be nested in the root component. So when we view it in a browser, we should just see nothing at the minute because there's nothing in this file. Okay, so to get us started with this component file, I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this and then edit it because I don't wanna write everything out from scratch, but we'll just get rid of these components because we don't need these. We don't need these imports. Um, we don't need this in the style tag. And up here, we don't want this. Okay, so now we want to show a list of our blogs. So let's kind of flesh out the view for that, first of all, the uh, the template, if you like. Okay, so let's give this an ID. And I'm going to set this equal to show hyphen blogs. And then within that, we'll do a H1. And this is going to say all blog articles. And then beneath this, what we want is a div. And this is where we're going to output our blogs. Okay. So each blog is going to be within a div and it's going to have a class equal to single hyphen blog. So in the code, there's going to be multiple ones of these. There's going to be like, I don't know, 10 or something like that. Okay. But I mean, we've seen this before. We don't want to hard code anything here. We just want to kind of cycle through our blogs and output them dynamically. So that says to me use v4 okay and at the minute we don't have any blogs to loop through so first of all we need to go out and we need to make that get request and retrieve those blogs then store them in some kind of local variable so we can use that then to cycle through them and output them in the template make sense Okay, so the way we're going to do that is by using the lifecycle hook created. Remember a few tutorials ago, I talked about lifecycle hooks and we can use the created one to fire when this component is first created to go out and retrieve some data. If you need a refresher, then just skip back to that tutorial first of all. Okay, so created. This is the function which will fire when the component is first made. Okay, so in here, we want to say this dot dollar sign HTTP. Remember, we can use this now because we've installed view resource. This time we want to make a get request. OK, and similar to post requests, we need to pop in a resource right there, a URL um, as to say where we're getting these posts from. Now, again, we're going to use this thing right here, JSON placeholder. So we've already made a post request to posts. Now let's make a get request to posts. And we want a list of all posts. So it's just going to be to forward slash posts. But remember, it's this thing first of all. This is the root URL. So we'll copy that and we'll head back over here and we'll paste it right in there. And then it's forward slash posts. Okay, so now we're getting the posts from this kind of fake dummy REST API. Okay, so. We don't need to pass in a second parameter here like we did with the post request because that was just the data we were posting. We're not sending any data here. But again, this returns to us a promise. So we can tack on the then method, which is only going to fire this function inside it when 
this action has been complete. So when it goes out, grabs the data, returns to us, when that's happened, then it fires this function right here, okay? And it brings back to us the data. So we pass that in as a parameter to this function. Okay, so inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, should we take a look at what data is returned to us? So we'll console.log data. Save that, and let's view this in a browser. So there's going to be nothing much on the screen at the minute, but if we inspect and then go to the console, we should see something which is returned to us. If I just refresh, then we can see this thing right here is returned to us. So this response has a body, right? And this body is an array. And this is an array of all the different posts. If we go to JSON placeholder and we click on posts, this is what the array is going to look like. You can see this array notation right here. And in each object right here, we have a different post, the user ID, the ID, the title, the body, etc. Now, there's a hundred of these things returned to us. You can see there's a hundred elements and we don't want to list a hundred on one page. We just want to show maybe something like 10. OK, so first of all, we want the body property and then we want to take 10 from this array. So first of all, how can we do that? Well, we can access it by saying, first of all, data dot body. We wanted the body property, remember, and then we're going to slice it. OK, and we're going to slice it from zero position to the 10th position. So that's going to get us the first 10 elements from that array. OK, so now we have those first 10 elements right there. Let's just delete this. What do we want to do with it? Well, we want to store it on some kind of property within this object right here. OK, so let's make that property first of all. Blogs, we'll store them in here. And at the minute, it's going to be an empty array. OK, but when we go out and get this data, retrieve it, then we'll store these things here in this array. So we'll say this dot blogs is equal to data.body.slice 010. So we're getting an array right here of the first 10 elements and then storing them in this property here. Okay, cool. So now we have those blogs in this array. And now we have an array, we can easily cycle through them using v4, right? So we can say something like this blog in blogs. And that's going to cycle through all of these blogs. And each time around, we can reference that individual blog from this variable, okay? So we can output some information now. So we can have a title to the block, h2, and we're gonna output the blog, the single blog dot title. Remember, title was a property on each one of these objects. If we just open this up, we can see that title right here is a property, okay? And also body is a property, so we'll output that as well. So we'll do an article tag beneath this and output the body. So we'll say blog.body, okay? Save that, and now let's check this out in a browser. Okay, cool. So now we're retrieving all of that data and we're outputting it right here. But I mean, this doesn't look great. So what I'm gonna do is just add in a little bit of CSS to make it look at least slightly better. So I'll target the show blogs ID, which is the surrounding div right here. And inside this, I'll just do some simple styles. So a max width of about 800 pixels. And then we'll say margin is zero and auto. So that's gonna centralize it on the page. Next, we wanna target each individual single blog. So it has this class of single blog. So single hyphen blog. And inside this, we'll say each blog has a padding of about 20 pixels, right? And then also a margin of 20 pixels top and bottom, but zero left and right. We'll say the box hyphen sizing is going to be border box. So that takes into consideration the padding and border if there is any. And we'll give it a background as well, which is going to be EEE, -E -E, which is a very light gray. So let's save that and see if this looks any better whatsoever. Cool. That is starting to look a bit better now. Okay. It's not going to get design of the year, but at least it doesn't look very ugly. Cool. So now we know how to use view resource to make post requests and also to make get requests. So later in the tutorial, when we hook this up to Firebase, we're going to make this a bit more dynamic so that we can add new posts 
And then when we list them, it's going to list the posts that we add. And then we can click into each post and see more about that post as well.